Hey guys, welcome back to another fresh episode on wireless technology. So in today's video, let's see some of the basic protocols which are used in the WPAN. And so some of these protocols you can see in the upcoming standards of IEEE 802.15 that is in Bluetooth as well as in Zigbee. So this protocol basically forms the different layers and uh, bases to different uh, technologies as we move on to the next videos. So let's get started. Let's uh, understand or let's consider only five different protocols which form the basis in the WPAN uh, for doing the effective communication between various layers and to make this protocol stack in function. So this is how the block diagram of WPAN protocols looks like. So uh, the protocols are just uh, put in such a way that it functions in a proper way. So let's consider a bottom to top approach it means we will start the protocol description from the bottom and then we move to the upper side. So uh, very first you have the radio. So radio is basically done for interfacing between different layers which are there or participated in the WPAN and also different protocols in order to uh, make them into functional. And then you have the frequency hopping. So frequency hopping is mainly done in order to uh, do the efficient uh, bandwidth for uh, different uh, purpose like for during the data transmission if you want a larger bandwidth then you can go for frequency hopping as well as you can do modulation so modulation is mainly done with the help of gaussian frequency shift key in gfsk and then you have the power transmission so power management like we saw in the uh, wlan like ad hoc power management and everything is done with the help of radio so all those things are responsible in the radio so the modulation which we spoke so uh, modulation is done mainly of gfsk and uh, the GFSK modulation basically yields two types of modulation like you have 432 kbps for bidirectional modulation and then you have 721 kbps for asymmetrical modulation. Next we move on to the uh, little upper layer that is we have the base band also short named as BB. So it basically does the connection establishment and in it's done in PicoNet. So PicoNet is uh, topology in which WPAN functions so that we'll consider in the next video what are the different uh, WPAN topologies so there are basically PicoNet and ScatterNet in which the uh, different network nodes are arranged in a particular fashion and then you have the addressing so different types of addressing modes 32 bit 64 bit addressing modes everything is considered in the baseband and then you have the packet format that is the packet which is coming it's in what size that is 32 or 64 bits and then you have the power control uh, the basic power transmission etc and then the timing since uh, you know it uh, considers a master and slave architecture so various nodes which are participated in it are uh, communicated in what fashion like if you have TDMA then different time slots are arranged and so it all comes under the baseband next we have the link management protocol that is it uh, you can see as a small block here so it basically uh, from the name itself it manages some kind of link so uh, the link which is established uh, between various bluetooth devices for example if you have a bluetooth speaker or if you have a bluetooth headset or if you have a uh, fitness tracker so uh, this all when just uh, comes into picture at one point of time the configuration between these devices is established with the help of lmp and so you have a manager called as a link manager in that and then it does the authentication of various uh, devices uh, their uh, mac address their ip address everything is managed and the packet size the data transmission or the packet in which they are sent are just limited to a particular distance so all those things are mainly considered in the lmp next we move on to the logical link control and adaptation protocol so this is basically from the logical link control that we have the llc so here you have logical link that is it's written as l2 and then cap so logical link control and adaptation protocol so uh, this basically sits here so there is an interface which just splits uh, this lower layer protocols from this higher layer protocol so that's a host controller interface so l2 cap just fits above the host controller interface and it adapts all the upper layer protocols to the baseband means all these higher layer protocols which are there above this L2 cap are all managed with the help of uh, baseband. So it's like uh, this uh, protocols are made compatible to the baseband since baseband forms the basis of uh, any technology or any standard which you make from the IEEE 802.15. So this uh, L2 cap just makes sure that each and every protocol or application layer is uh, component uh, convenient to this uh, baseband. Next you have it provides the connectionless services and connection oriented services. 
so these two are formed in the bluetooth so that will understand in detail when we see the bluetooth architecture next we have something called as the sdp which is called as a service delivery protocol so this is another uh, vital protocol which is used in the bluetooth technology so it stores or it gives the device information the device id or the device name or what kind of service it basically gives and the characteristic of that particular device next uh, it gives the service query as well uh, means what type of connection you want to do whether uh, you want to acquisit a different connection like connection acquisition or connection release or pairing request so everything comes in sdp and finally you have one interface which is called as the host controller interface means it controls the host host means some device or some smartphone where you want to connect to some other device like for example if you have a laptop or a smartphone uh, then for example if a smartphone is connected to this laptop then smartphone will be a host and laptop will be the uh, device to uh, which it is being sent so it provides the command interface to the baseband as well as the link manager so that you can type any uh, shell level commands to this so that it can be easily accessible and then it provides the hardware status so it accesses different hardwares uh, which are inside whatever registers are there so it basically controls those registers and it gets the information regarding uh, those devices and then uh, this hci exists across three sections so uh, it exists at the host so where the host is or where that sending device is at the transport layer in the osi model at the layer 4 it exists and then at the host controller where that host sits and does the operation so well that was all regarding a quick introduction in the wpan protocol so hope you guys enjoyed this video and got educated watching this video please do like share comment and if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing thank you very much for watching this video